welcome all of you to these uh, proceedings. I wish to recognize our distinguished guests who have joined us this morning, uh, recognizing the Honorable Retired Chief Justice, uh, Othman Chande, and your entire delegation of eminent African jurists who, are, who have come to observe these uh, proceedings. You're very welcome. I wish to also recognize the parties who are present, the petitioners, the respondents, their friends and supporters who are watching us online. Unfortunately, due to constrained space that we are operating from, we could not accommodate very many people. You can all see uh, we are all required to observe the COVID-19 protocols. We also have to be mindful of security and the constrained time, and therefore we were forced to remit the number of the council who can appear at any given time. But parties are free and at liberty to have as many council as they could. We'll try to accommodate as many as we can in the speed of a room, court number one, where they can follow the proceedings and continue assisting counsel who are in the plenary. Uh, we thank the media also uh, for coming to stream the proceedings online to assist Kenyans and all people from all over the world who are watching and following these uh, proceedings across Africa and across the world. Uh, we specifically I want to thank the observers uh, who have come to be part of this process to attest that we are all guided by the rule of law, constitutionalism, uh, values that we all share across Africa and indeed in the Commonwealth and all over the world. And also to express the judicial solidarity uh, for us, which is a core emblem which cuts across the border as we attempt to develop our jurisprudence and work together in the spirit of bilateralism and regionalism. We therefore welcome you to Kenya to these uh, proceedings. Today, uh, council and parties, we are here for the pre-trial of the election petitions that were filed before us. As you are aware, nine petitions were filed and we received 25 preliminary issues in form of interlocutory applications. We have been able to dispose of all those preliminary issues and delivered rulings online, uh, which I believe you are still reading and internalizing. Um, after we dealt with the preliminaries, two petitions were struck out. Petition number zero zero uh, petition number E006 and petition number E009 were struck out and the rulings were delivered together with the media summary showing the reasons why they were struck out. So we are left 
with seven petitions and the court has considered the seven petitions which emanate from the same uh, election presidential election which was held on the 9th of August 2022. So upon producing and considering the issues raised in the following petitions, E001, E002, E003, E004, E005, E007, and E008 of 2022, and the respondents thereto, we find that all those petitions raise similar issues and seek similar orders. Therefore, we order that petitions numbers E001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 8 of 2022 be and here by consolidated with petition number E005 of 2022, which is designated as the read a uh, presidential election petition for 2022. The parties will therefore be, the ending of the matter will therefore read as Raira Odinga and Martha Karua will be the first petitioners. John Joroge Kamau will be the second petitioner. Youth Advocacy Africa and Peter Kileka will be the third petitioner. Kerif Karifa, John Josewe, Ruth Mumbi, Grace Kamau, David Kariuki will be the fourth petitioner. Okia Mtata Okoiti, Nyakena Wycliffe Gisebe, Victor Okuna, John Maina will be the sixth, the sixth petitioner. Julia Nyokabi Chege, Joseph Mutua Ndonga, Simon Mwaura Njenga will be the seventh petitioner. The respondents will be William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagua, uh, the first and second respondents. Uh, IBC will be the third respondent. Then Mr. Wafura Shepkati, uh, fourth respondent. Juliana Cherera, fifth respondent. Irene Masiti, sixth respondent. Justice Nyangaya, seventh respondent. Uh, Francis Wanderi, eighth respondent. Professor Gurie, ninth respondent. Boya Moru, tenth respondent. And the Attorney General will be the eleventh respondent. From the rulings that we delivered, we have admitted uh, Law Society of Kenya as um, amicus curiae or amici curiae with ICJ, uh, Mr. John Warubengo, Dr. Joseph Savira, and Martin Mirero. That is the order of the court for the consolidation of the matter.
So the other issue that we are going to deal with this morning upon consolidation of the matter is to settle the issues uh, for determination. Uh, the court having considered the printings that were filed, the submissions and all the documents that were filed, we have framed nine issues that have been shared with you by now, I believe, but I'll read them out. The first issue is whether the technology deployed by IMBC for the conduct of the 2022 general elections met the standards of integrity, verifiability, security, and transparency to guarantee accurate and verifiable results. Issue number two, whether there was interference with the uprounding and transmission of Forms 34A from the polling stations to the IMBC public portal. Issue number three, whether there was a difference between Forms 34As uprounded on the IMBC public portal and forms 34 A's received at the National Tiring Center and forms 34 A's issued to the agents at the polling stations. Issue number four, whether the postponement of gubernatorial elections in Kakamega and Mombasa counties Parliamentary elections in Kitui Ruro, Kacheriba, Rongai, and Pokot South constituencies, and electoral wards in Nyaki West in North Menti constituency, and Kwanjenga in Embakasi South constituency, resulted in voter suppression to the detriment of the petitioners in petition number E005 of 2022. Number five, whether there were unexplained discrepancies between the votes cast for presidential candidates and other elective positions. Issue number six, whether the IMBC carried out the verification, tarring, and declaration of results <coughs> in accordance with the provisions of Article 138.3c and 138.10 of the Constitution. Issue number seven, whether the declared president elect attained 50% plus one vote of the votes cast in accordance with Article 1384 of the Constitution. And number eight, whether there were irregularities and illegalities of such magnitude as to affect the final result of the presidential election. And finally, what relieves and orders can this court